Thanks for clicking into this week's Capital Update podcast. It's February 18th, and we will be going over a number of issues this week, including a look back at some highlights from last week's 2013 THA annual conference held right here in Austin. We'll also be talking this week with John Hawkins, THA Senior VP for Advocacy and Public Policy, who will review his testimony before the House Public Health Committee and the House Appropriations Article II Subcommittee. That testimony gave THA an opportunity to review the impact of the last legislature's decision to cut Medicaid reimbursement rates paid to hospitals. He'll also talk about how Texas hospital leaders need to engage legislators on the importance of maximizing federal disproportionate share hospital dollars. We're coming right back with a look at this week's THA 2013 annual conference. Stick around. We're coming right back. The 2013 THA annual conference took place right here in Austin with approximately 400 hospital leaders from around the state in attendance. Of course, with the legislative session in full swing, there were plenty of legislative issues to review with Texas Health and Human Services Commissioner Kyle Janik and State Representative John Zerwas, who is chairman of the Appropriations Article II subcommittee. We discussed everything from mental health to Medicaid expansion to funds for disproportionate share hospital program. At this historic moment of transformation for our industry, when the path ahead seems littered with challenges, it also creates abundant opportunities. Texas hospitals are essential. We're not an afterthought. From the critical access hospital to the major trauma center, from the rural area hospital to the urban centers, we are the backbone of the healthcare system and we need to be supported. The solutions THA has sought will be the building blocks of future success for Texas hospitals and Texas health care. What an opportunity before us. Working together to lead the transformation of health care in Texas, we can deliver what the people of our state expect and deserve, greater access to high quality, affordable, patient-centered hospital and preventive health care services. Fill us in a little bit uh, on what's going on at the Capitol this week. We were able to get John Hawkins, uh, wrench him away from a couple of meetings, and, uh, and, and obviously this week has been active with uh, not only our own conference, but also a number of hearings. So let's jump right into it. You testified last week before the, uh, the House Appropriations Article II subcommittee, as well as the House uh, Public Health Committee. What are some of the highlights uh, from those hearings, not only from um, your own testimony, but from what you heard from legislators and other witnesses? Okay. Well, thanks, Lance. Uh, it was a busy week. Uh, the, the House is really gearing up now that they have their committee set up and, and did have the opportunity to testify before both House Appropriations and Public Health. And really the message w was the same and it, it you know, focuses on hospital financing and, and really the shortfalls in the current system. Uh, you know, stress the need for stability in hospital financing based on all the cuts that we received the last session. Uh, really made the case that, that we need, uh, hospitals need stability to digest that and, and really get on a good footing going forward. And I think to that end, that moves us pretty quick into the discussion about the sustainability of DISH, uh, both on a short-term basis and, and a long-term basis. And, you know, I think really our biggest priority right now is to stress to them that we ought to not leave uh, any DISH funds, any federal funds on, on the table going forward, particularly given the, uh, the uncertainty of DISH uh, going forward under ACA, we know we'll be taking some, uh, some reductions. Uh, DISH isn't going to go away by any means, but uh, we do know we're going we're to take some reductions, and so this would not be a good year to leave federal funds uh, on the table. Uh, really, it's almost the, kind of the base year we're arguing for them to calculate those cuts. Okay, so for, for some people out there, for some of the audience, tell them that to, to leave those funds on the table is essentially uh, the, how, the legislature not putting up enough 
uh, general revenue dollars to, to draw down those federal funds. Correct, correct. Really, I think, you know, we've made the case that um, it, it's not sustainable to, to continue to rely on the, the big uh, eight transferring hospitals, really only, only four larger facilities. Uh, it's not uh, sustainable to allow them to continue to fund uh, the whole DISH program, and, and the waiver has, has changed that dynamic as well. So basically the, the, the transferring hospitals have committed to fund about $318 million in the current fiscal year. We uh, initially uh, got a commitment from the state for $100 million. Uh, the problem is that still leaves federal funds on the table. So our ask really this week, uh, and we need help from the members, is to stress that uh, we really need $175 million at least in state general revenue to make sure uh, we draw down the full federal share in, in the DISH program going forward. And what's the best route at, the main, at this point for these hospital leaders, whether they're the CEO, to, do they need to be communicating that not only to their own communities, their own hospitals, um, but how do they need to reach out to legislators? Is it easy in some cases, a, a phone call? or Yeah, I, I think a, a phone call. Certainly we, we know we had a lot of members in town last week and, and many of them made personal visits, uh, cut away from the conference to do that. Uh, but really, uh, and we can you know, provide this information on, on the website, uh, if you've got a member in your area that's on the House Appropriations Committee or the Senate Finance Committee, uh, they need to hear from you, particularly if you do receive DISH, they need to, to hear about how important that program is and, and need to know that uh, state funding of that program needs to be a priority this, this session going forward. We'll have that up uh, on the website here and uh, here on the podcast. We'll have a, you can see a list of that scrolling right now. Um, next week, uh, we'll have uh, a number of issues to talk about, uh, not only looking back uh, over um, uh, what's going on uh, in, in the, the House, but we do have a bill coming up right now on the uh, emergency appropriations to, to fund what was remaining, the, the $4.5 billion that remains in, in Correct. Medicaid. Correct. Yeah, that's... Uh, Really, the, the big news this week will be on Thursday when the House takes up um, House Bill 10, which is the first of what we think will be uh, maybe as many as three emergency appropriations bills. Uh, this one will only deal with primarily the Medicaid, the short funding of Medicaid from last session, $4.5 billion, you, you pointed out, uh, and a, a, some funds for the, the Foundation School Program to true up a, a payment delay they made. Uh, you would think that would be straightforward uh, to, to pay our, our unpaid bills, as it were, especially since that was the agreement going forward last session. Uh, but there's a lot of talk over there about the cuts to public education, and, and the concern is some members may try to uh, force a, a vote to, to reallocate some of that funding to public education. Yeah. Uh, the speaker's committed to have that discussion later in the session. Uh, but really the, the most pressing need is, uh, is to fund Medicaid, certainly important to hospitals, and, and frankly the program will run out of money in, in late March or early April if we don't get this bill passed. I think one of the, the key messages is really to relay that just because the funding isn't there doesn't, doesn't diminish demand. It, you know, it doesn't seem that, uh, like a difficult message to really delay that, that demand doesn't necessarily follow funding. Correct, and, and I think you know, that's Really, the legislature had the ability to short finance that program, knowing it is uh, an entitlement. Those services will be provided. It's just a matter of uh, them uh, being a, having the flexibility to true that payment up later on. But but it is a message, and, and I know we're working with the medical association to to get the word out to, to members of the legislature that that we shouldn't be uh, necessarily pitted against public education. Uh, in, in this fight and, and uh, the, the funding of Medicaid is, is the right thing to do for, for doctors, hospitals and, and our patients. All right, as you said, THA has a number of the uh, materials on the website for them to be it for uh, anybody that wants to engage their uh, legislature, uh, legislator. Um, we'll also make those available uh, through the, the on the Capital Update podcast webpage. Uh, many of these uh, materials can already be utilized at www.tha.org or contact any of uh, the THA advocacy staff, I suppose, for, uh, to, to locate any of that information, uh, additional information that people are looking for. Obviously, we have a lot of data that we track, um, and we can, go, we can go pull a lot of that. Correct. All right. Well, good deal. Next week, be sure to click through to the Capital Update podcast for information on funding for mental health. 
We'll be uh, going over some trauma issues and Medicaid expansion. Also, don't forget that coming up at the Capitol Tuesday, February 26th is Trauma Day. Uh, trauma Day kicks off right here at the uh, Texas Hospital Association headquarters, so we need everybody to get involved in that. To get involved, register to attend Trauma Day by going to the website for Texas EMS Trauma and Acute Care Foundation at www.tetaf.org and click on the calendar section located right there on the main menu. And as always, for more information on the Texas Hospital Association, follow us on Facebook or on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is, of course, at Texas Hospitals, or visit our website at www.tha.org. I'm Lance Lunsford. We do appreciate you spending your time with us to learn a little bit more about what's going on here at the Capitol. We'll see you next week on the Capitol Update Podcast.